Welcome to the Super Sentai Brothers. This is episode 43 of The Spy Who Loved Mega Ranger, the internet's best and only podcast dedicated to Denji Sentai Mega Ranger. Every week we watch an episode of the show and we share our thoughts with you, the listener. My name is Matt J. With me as always is my co-host and brother Dave. Dave, how are you doing today? Good, man. I'm good. Uh, it's been an absolutely stunning couple of days here in uh, beautiful Cleveland. And, yeah, it's been lovely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm working on a uh, working on a new project. I'm not going to say a whole lot about it yet, except that the stats for this project are shore waves, blood, and salt. So there's love, a little love that. teaser, a little teaser for another project that I'll never finish. Yeah, but starting them is so fun. Starting them is so fun. Uh, that is that is a super classic like uh, ADHD uh, kind of brain thing but Mm -hmm. so here's here's how i'm choosing to look at it matt is every new project i'm sort of like taking and learning and recycling bits from old projects so i i'm like starting to like be able to copy and paste big chunks of stuff that i've already done yeah and so i figure at starting projects so so well my thought is is that if i just add a successive amount in iterative layers, like a clam creating a pearl, it's oysters who create pearls, right? Yeah. Whatever. Anyways, eventually, like four projects, four, five, six projects down the road, I will have accreted enough that the start will also effectively be the end, and then I'll have a completed project. Well, you know, it's like um, it's like in playing those like a like a difficult platformer video game. Like, did you play Celeste? I didn't. I did. I heard about it, but I did not actually get a chance to play it. Uh, Celeste is really fun, but I mean, you can substitute any particularly difficult platforming game for this. Mm -hmm. You know, you start to play the game, and like you keep falling down holes, and then you get a little further, and like you learn the patterns, and you learn the rhythm of the game, and you learn the controls really well. And so then, like later, when you go back and do the thing that like was very difficult for you, like you have like trained yourself to just jump through that stuff very easily yeah i think that's a good way it's sort of like new game plus wherein the game has like a super duper secret ending uh and in my case the super secret ending is you finish the project yeah but Uh, anyway you know like you you have learned how to play the first few levels really well yeah that's a very good way to think about it so i'm 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 getting there but this is uh i i feel really I, I've there's there's a lot here. I think it's gonna be really cool and fun. Anyways, you know what else is cool and fun, Dave? It's Denji Sentai Mega Ranger, and today we are watching episode forty three of it, which is great. Yeah, it's a very good episode. Extremely uh, good. It is called "We Won't Be Defeated: Decisive Christmas Eve Clash." It is written by Junki Takagame. Uh, its original air date was December twenty first, nineteen ninety seven. Um, Dull Steve's in it. It's great. Anyway, yeah. uh, we're going to talk about that, but Dave, before we do, of course, we have to get through our officially award-winning opening segment, Dave Shining in the Heavens, There Are Five Stars. Would you like to hear what the first star of the week is? I sure would, Matt. Dave, I have been back in the office myself pretty regularly for the last two months, right? We've talked about it on the show. Yeah, you have mentioned it a handful of times uh, that you are there, but it's still very kind of empty, like, overall. Yeah, um, but this week is the first week that, like, everybody is back. We're doing this, like, weird split schedule thing where basically they kind of laid a grid over the seating chart and said, like, you know, like, you count off one, two, one, two, and, like... The ones come in on Monday and Wednesday, and the twos come in on Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah, we Um, had a very similar schedule for the students. Yeah, yeah, just to sort of, like, decrease building density, have you a little further away from, you know, people when you're sitting at your workstation. Um, It's like phase one of a multi-phase return to the office strategy. Like, they're... Mm -hmm. We, we, there were like there have been PowerPoint presentations. There have been hour long meetings about the phases of this plan, um, which you know is good. It's, it's it's I'm actually glad that they're being overly communicative about it. Anyway, 
So I'm just back at the office this week, and it's so weird and good to just have other people around. Nah. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realize how much I felt like I was just like a ghost haunting the office before. Because really, it was like 12 people in a building that houses 400 people, you know? Oh, yeah, that's insane. Um, And so now there are 200 people in a building that houses 400 people. Um, I don't know if those numbers are exactly right, but like that's roughly what it is. And I'm seeing people like, hey, you, I, I, I like you. You're like a person that I used to talk to every day. And you're here now, and we're talking, and that's fun. Um, there aren't a lot of like great jokes about it. The only really funny thing is that I've told you before that I work at a hashtag fun office. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very fun office. Well, you can tell that they have been like, you know, normally every couple of weeks there's like a thing, right? There's like... yeah. Hey, it's Earth Day today, so we have I was going to say, kind of the barest excuses will do. Yeah, really. And so they pulled out, like, the summer's social calendar. And apparently they've only told us about, like, half of it. And it seems as though they've just spent the last year saving up events. Like, today, (laughs) like, I, I was in on Monday, and there were cupcakes to celebrate... Like, the end of a big project, like Cupcakes for the Office. Uh, I was in today, and uh, I think this was, like, a, I, I honestly don't even remember why they did it. But there was a, a snow cone truck that came. Wow. That is an interesting... Also, huh. apparently there are snow cone trucks, which is a Is thing. it a snow cone truck, or is it like a Hawaiian shave ice truck? Just how snazzy is this? Uh... Um, it is... Uh, it was called like a Koa truck? K-O-H-A? Um, I which think is like that a is like a Hawaiian... I think I've seen thing. that at the zoo. Yeah. That it definitely feels like the sort of thing you would see at a zoo. Very nice. Uh, yeah, it was a oh, Kona. Kona shaved ice. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely like a Hawaiian shave ice thing. Um, yeah, so it was a shave ice truck. Um, one of the flavors of the shave ice truck, one of the flavors that are on op- on offer for you is just called Tiger Blood. Uh, and if you read the description of the flavor, it doesn't tell you what flavor Tiger Blood is. It just tells you that... Uh, here, let me. Tiger's blood. I'm sorry, it's possessive. It's the blood of. Well, a man, just tell me tiger. what it tasted like. Well, no, no, I no, no, no. I don't need to hear the description. You just tell me what it tasted like. Because if you're telling me that tiger blood was an option and you chose something else, I just. David, I need I, you to lie to me and make up what it tasted like so that I can that I can maintain faith in you here. Uh, I my I was told that it. Uh, I'm sorry, Dave. I got lime. Uh, <laughs> I'm dying over here. <laughs> I was told it was sort of like a s- cross between like a strawberry and a coconut flavor, which is why I did not get it because I don't want wa- ice that tastes like coconuts. Um, but the description. This is all the description that it gives you on the Kona Ice website. Uh, Tiger's blood. We hunted through all the jungles in Asia to find the most willing tiger to give us some of their blood. This guy right here, happily obliged. End of description. Love it. <laughs> Nothing else. They have another flavor that I think is like a tropical punch thing. Well, it is It, it is a tropical punch thing. It says so. But it's called Island Rush. And do you know why it's called Island Rush, Dave? I haven't the foggiest. Dave, it's named after Kona Ice's gaming app. I did not look up what that is. Um, it's got a picture of a penguin running, so I assume it's like an infinite runner. But like, these guys really like man. I, yep, I do it's an not. Runner. I do not fully understand the uh, the business process or process or theory behind this. But I like shaved ice, and it was nice to get it at work today. Yeah, until man, you, you know, until rush. you get to like the like you know the last quarter of the cup, because then the ice is kind of melted, and you're just sort of like 
ladling like watered down syrup into your mouth and at that point it's just time to move on with your yeah that's day. not a great experience man i'll throw you a little bit here uh, island rush is an endless runner game the goal is to see how far you can make it across the island of gooba juba and i can't put my finger on it exactly but that name just that name just seems racist matt i'm not quite sure exactly why it or does. against who yeah no it sounds bad dave it but calling it Gooba Juba is just a, that's a bad I don't love hearing look. you say it, if I'm going to be frank. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're back in the office, and I, uh, uh, I, I, I could, I honestly, I could not be more happy about being back in the office. I'm glad that we're not back every day. It's nice to have that, like, you know, on off thing. But boy, it is, it's, it's just good to see people after a long time of not seeing people. Dave, what is our second star of the week? Man, our second star of the week, as it so often is, it's Bun Vulcan. Welcome to Bun Vulcan. Anyways, so my oldest daughter, uh, it was her 18th birthday the other day, and uh, I said sweetie you can pick you can we'll make a cake you pick whatever you want so i just gave her dessert person and i said there's beautiful pictures all through this book you just go through this book until you find a picture of something that you want and then you point you just tell me what it is and i'll make it all right and so she decided she wanted coffee cake and so i made claire saffitz's coffee cake and it was uh it was amazing it was it was really really excellent fun twist there is cinnamon in it but there is also a lot of like coffee flavor like she uses like coffee in the, so it's coffee flavored coffee cake okay okay so like in the sugar like the spice sugar layer mm-hmm. in, that's in the middle of a coffee cake she also has like uh instant coffee interesting yeah and it is cinnamon because Obvi- it's coffee cake, right? You got to have cinnamon, but it's also very cardamom forward. And coffee and cardamom is a combo that works really, really well together. It's very stereotypical in like Middle Eastern countries. Um, if you are not a person who's like super familiar with cardamom, uh, cardamom is the secret ingredient in everything that's delicious from like anywhere in and around the Mediterranean and the Red Sea and like India. Like, if you eat something from one of those cuisines and you're like, this is delicious, but I can't figure out what it tastes like, 95% chance the answer is cardamom, um, particularly if it's a dessert. Anyways, uh, delicious coffee cake. Work turned out super, super well. I was very proud of it. Um, that's it. Just strong recommend on that book, Dessert Person. I have not read the book, but uh, I have been watching the videos. And I do like that, like, she seems to be, like, like, She'll have a twist on a recipe, but it's it never feels like, oh, well, here's the twist on the recipe. Like, you had no. to make your version of it, so now it's weird. Like, no, it's just like an inventive thing to do with uh, a thing that was already good. Yeah, that is. She really is um, excellent. And the other thing I really like about her recipes is that they are not aggressively sweet. Mm-hmm. Which I think is a problem with a lot of, with a lot of like particularly like, obviously like dessert baking tends to be sweet, but it's very easy, particularly like in recipes that are by Americans, to just mm-hmm. have things be like aggressively, aggressively sweet. And she really tones it back. And they are, you know, obviously they're dessert for sure, but they're not um, in your face, and it really allows a lot of other really cool flavors to be worked with and and brought to the fore um it's a it's really an excellent book and if, as you mentioned she has a youtube channel and her youtube channel is also a delight yeah she put tahini in her hala looked good uh anyways matt what is our third star of the week dave third star of the week is so i was at work right you and mentioned. i was walking around i was i was taking a walk getting up stretching the legs as you do. And I walked past, uh, I wasn't like just walking around in the parking lot, but I was walking past some cars sort of on my way to my walk. And I saw a car from the front and I'm like, oh, somebody has a Mustang. That looks nice. And then I thought, wait a second, the front end of that Mustang looks weird. 
and the back end of that Mustang looks weird. The front end looked weird because there wasn't like a grill in the front. It was just like solid plastic. And okay. I'm like, well, that's weird. And then the back of it was like big. That and is so weird. I, yeah, I, took a, okay. I took another lap while I sort of considered this. And I thought, well, I've seen cars that have like a solid plastic front on it. And that just means, like, that always means it's an electronic car. Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. need air intake because it's an electronic car. And so it doesn't have a grill. And right. so I guess there's an electric Mustang. And then I was looking at it again. And it's a hatchback. What? It's a it's an electric hatchback Mustang. Now here's the thing, Dave. I myself drive a Prius an electric... hatchback, right? Like I I am hatchback. I am in the I am in the uh, fuel efficient uh, hybrid hatchback life. That's how I live. I appreciate it. So I have no judgment on someone who wants to drive an electric hatchback. Thumbs up. But here's the... If you're going to do that, there is a trade-off. And the trade-off is that you don't get to pretend that it's cool. You don't get get to pretend that you have, like, a cool car. You have a dork car. You you might have a very nice dork car. I do kind of wonder... But you have a dorky car, and that's okay. It's fine to have a dorky car. It's better to have a dorky car. But you don't get to buy an electric hatchback and slap a Mustang logo on it and tell me that it's cool. Because it's not cool. It's good, but it's not cool. And trying yeah. to make it cool makes it so much worse. It, like It it's... makes it a parody. <laughs> It's sort of like the Theseus' ship of Mustangs, but instead of just replacing each part with an identical part, like you replace each part with a lamer part. Yeah. A more efficient part, sure. A more sustainable part, certainly. A part with better trunk space, absolutely. But definitely a lamer part. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, that's all there is about that. Dave, what is our fourth star of the week? So, Matt, I'm playing this new game, and uh, it is actually new. It's like, it was it was on Steam, it was very cheap, Um, but it was, it's like still in pre-release. It's like new, new, new. Oh, you're playing like uh, a now new game. No, it is a game. sequel. Yeah, crazy, right? We Me, never talk about of all new people. games. I know. Uh, anyways, well, it's a very small game, but it's a lot of fun so far. It's a sequel to, it's a sequel, it's called The Bonfire 2. Uh, okay. It is, of course, a sequel to just The Bonfire. The bonfire. Sorry, the Bonfire 2 colon Uncharted Shores. And it is a, like, city-building survival uh, sim, right? But it's got a very, like, Nordic village feel to it, like a little Viking village. And so I'm actually only, like, a portion of the way through the game. Like, you start out, and you have to build a bonfire, and then you've got to, like, assign... Uh, you have, like, individual villagers, which I think is a very cool twist, right? This is not, like, a um, uh, uh, not like a, a generalized, like, population. Like, each person has a name, and they are good at particular things, and they each have stats. And you have to be, like, assigning people to be doing jobs. And you have to, you know, some of them have to be guards, and some of them have to be, like, loggers and farmers and blacksmiths and stuff. And then as you are, you know, there is a, a kind of a, a gentle tech tree, right? Uh-huh. So, you know, once you have wood, you can then build an iron mine, which you can then build a blacksmith, and then you can build a bridge and build, make coal. Like, um, anyways, so there's even a mobile version. I got the mobile version first. Uh, it's a little bit heavy duty, I think, for a mobile phone, unless... Now, my phone is not very great, but it's it would just be like, it's hard after a while, there's like so much going on on the screen, mm-hmm. but I got it on Steam and it's like twelve bucks, and it is it is a really really fun little game. Like strong recommend on on the bonfire too. Nice, sounds very cool. Yeah. Uh, then what is our fifth and final star of the week? So our fifth and final star of the week, Matt, is yesterday. Uh, my wife and I took the kids. We went down to the Columbus Zoo. Oh, We're like we want to get zoo. out and. Love the zoo. We want to get out and do something. The zoo is outside, right? CDC recommendations are like, listen, if you're outside and there's a good, nice breeze and the sun is shining, like you're 
you're pretty much you're you're pretty you're as safe as you're gonna be. Yeah. Right. Like it's cool. You can go places outside. Um. You know. Huge chunks of Ohio are vaccinated. We're still wearing. Ma- we still Dave, were it's, wearing masks. Dave, it's been over a year. We don't I need know, to do I, the I rigmarole just, I every time we talk now. about going outside, <laughs> dude. It's just gonna listen. If I'm gonna be real, this is partly for mom. Uh-huh. Anyways, and I think it's just gonna take time to break those habits, right? Like you just got into it so hard so often that you're like, I went to the store, but I was wearing full hazmat gear. It's okay, right? right? So anyways, I burned we went to the my Columbus clothes Zoo. afterwards. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> so and all the things about the Columbus Zoo. Hey, it's a great zoo. Great zoo. Um better than the Cleveland Zoo. Now, and I think part of that at least is that it's like outside of Columbus and if you've never been to Columbus, Columbus is very flat. Like it's in the kind of like the geographical center of Ohio and there's not a lot of like geographical features in and around Columbus. So the Columbus Zoo has functionally like infinite space to spread out, mm-hmm. whereas the Cleveland Zoo is like very heavily bounded <laughs> on like all sides by Cleveland. Right. Well, um, and also the Cleveland Zoo is built like Cleveland is not known for being like a hilly place, but there's like a couple of big rivers that run for, through Cleveland. And this is built like on the side of the river valley, kind of. Yeah. It's a in in retrospect, it's a weird location for a zoo. But anyways, Columbus Zoo is great. It's huge. Um, both I, just like as far as space goes, like it takes forever to walk around the place. Um, but it's really really fun. It was fun. We we looked at it. We were like, you know what, man, we're just gonna get a membership, which is insane because I now have memberships. I have memberships to two zoos. And Columbus is not like far far, but you don't live in Columbus. I don't live in Columbus, but again, here's the thing, like, you know, like, the kids are old enough now that, like, we can get in the car, and they can pretty much knock out a two-hour drive. Like, that's not a lot of, di- that's, they're pretty fine with that, especially now that um, Sugar Bean is listening, they're into chapter books, so they're listening to chapter books now. Okay. So anyways, um, handful of things. First thing, something I just discovered about one of my favorite animals, the gorilla, Matt in case you didn't know this delightful piece of information, the scientific name for the Western Lowland Gorilla mm-hmm. is just Gorilla, 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 in italics, presumably. Of course. <laughs> yeah, like each gorilla, it's the gorilla gorilla that can gorilla. It's amazing. Um, it's just Gorilla, 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 which is That's fantastic. Great. Here's the second thing. Uh, the Columbus Zoo, Matt, as is the Cleveland Zoo, I believe, is sponsored by Pepsi. And if anybody on the Pepsi marketing team is, which means, of course, that you can only get Pepsi there. Right. Okay. And if anybody from the Pepsi marketing team is listening, I have a piece of advice for you. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. It's, it's working against, because here's the, here's the deal. I have never been someplace and said, can I get a Coke? And they say, we have Pepsi. Is that okay? And my answer is, Sure. My answer is never yes. My answer is I'll have a water. That's fine. Because I don't want a Pepsi. I want a Coke. So like, you're not like, if somebody already drinks Pepsi, you don't need to convert them. Like it's fine. You've already got them. Mm -hmm. Right? If somebody wants Coke and all they can get is Pep, all that you're doing making me do is A, not buy Pepsi, and B, resent you. Because I don't want your product. I want a Coke. And if you present, like, if all I can get is a Pep, now I'm just angry that I can't get a Coke. And I know that it's Pepsi's fault. Like, <laughs> like you messed up. Uh, so stop it. Dude, Anyways. Yeah. I, I, am, I am pretty solidly a Coke man. Uh, if I... If I'm in the mood for a cola and I go to a restaurant and I ask for a Coke and they say we only have Pepsi, I'm probably not going to say no, but I'm going to say like, yeah, like at no point am I ever going to be like, yeah, of course. Yeah. No one's ever excited about, actually, Brian Cherry might be excited about, our friend Brian might be a Pepsi guy. Anyways, aside from, nobody's excited about Pepsi ever. Right. Uh, you might be ironically interested in a Crystal Pepsi if you are a person of a certain age, but that's about yeah, it. Yeah, but, 
But aside from that, like I know I don't want a Pepsi. I will have a, I'll have a, I'll have virtually anything else aside from a Pepsi. But I don't want a Pepsi. Anyways, Columbus Zoo, uh, it's great. Again, it is very large. And uh, we didn't even see the whole... We were there for like a long time. Did not see the whole thing. We're, we're just going to go back. Because here's the thing about memberships, right? Like, and they, they always price these things such... That, like, if you're going as a family, mm-hmm. it's just like, dude, if I go one other time this summer, which we will, like, if I go one other time... I'm dead even. If I go a third time, like that's just money. In your I'm, pocket, now yeah. I'm money ahead. It's like it's almost always worth it to just to get a membership to these places. Anyways, Matt, that's our fifth and final star of the week. Had a great time at the zoo with my kids. Nice. Uh, speaking of having a great time, we're about to have one talking about episode twenty-four or forty-three. Wow. <laughs> nope. Sorry, we're talking about episode twenty-four again. I don't remember what that one was, but. Uh, I think Mark's just going to play the rerun, and we'll see you next week for the greatest show on Earth. Uh, uh, no, we're, no, we're talking uh, episode 43, We Won't Be Defeated, de- Decisive Christmas Eve Clash. Uh, I already gave you the information about it. You can watch along with us on the DVDs or at ShoutFactoryTV.com. I recommend that you do, especially if you've, been, if you've been enjoying the recent episodes, because this is a decisive Christmas Eve Clash. It's not just any... Christmas Eve clash. Uh, anyway, we're gonna be right back after this. Okay, welcome back. It's episode twenty-four. Running solo, a silvery new face. Dave, I love a new face. I love a new face when it arrives in a Sentai show. Do love a new face, man. I like um, this one. I is. like this silvery new face. Okay, welcome back. Uh, episode 43. Dave, it's good. Oh yeah, it was real good. Sorry, just, um, just cracking a cold Bev, Matt. Ooh, you know I love a cold Bev. Love a cold Bev. Uh, episode 43, We Won't Be Defeated, Decisive Christmas Eve Clash, as aforementioned. Um, we start off, Kenta feels very badly that they had to so abandon bad. Mega Voyager. Yeah, now if you don't remember from last episode, basically what happened is that Nezzy's uh, red, yellow, and black turned into their giant monster forms and have mecha-napped Mega Voyager. Yes. Uh, To parts unknown. Now, Dr. Kubota is like, dude, seriously, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm glad that you're safe because, like, because you're still alive and you're still safe, we can strike back at them. Right. Like, we can. Yeah, you guys are the the key part about this. And then Yusuku comes in, and he's like, "Guys, we we can just build another one." Right. Like, these, it's a robot. These this isn't a season where these are like magical gods that are like the reincarnations of like ancient generals like it's a robot that i designed we can just make it again <laughs> and kent is like oh dang yeah that's a like that's a it's, it's amazing because he's like oh yeah that's like a really good boy and <laughs> you can tell that like in kent's mind mega voyagers out and like all the other robots of course are very much like people yeah and are like an integral part of like the mega team and Yusuku's like they're great but it they it's a car yeah we could do another one it's a car that has a gun and a sword which would be a pretty cool car and I would be sad if I lost mine but you know yeah no for sure so um we go from there to the Nezare dimension the Neza Rangers are stoked they're like dude we did it we got Mega Voyager, like, we're the we're crushing this. This is amazing. Those two other chumps are dead. They deserve to be dead because they sucked, but we rule. Um, King Javius' life force is being drained away, like, in a really intense way. And uh, what I have in the notes as Dr. Hinalar's kids, but what that just translates to is uh, Uganda and Shibalina. Because as the series very, has, yeah. yeah, like as the series has progressed, I have definitely come to see them as like siblings, and Doctor Hinalar is their dad. Yeah, um, they're his kids that he likes because the Nez Rangers also definitely are kind of his kids, but he did create them to kill the Nega Rangers 
Well, and then this next part, and it turns out, die. Yeah, so Nezzy, Nezzy Red is coming in to deliver the good news, and he overhears the conversation that they're having. Dr. Hinalar tells Shibalina in Uganda, like, listen, I know that things are bad with Javius right now, and if he does find out, it would be bad, but here's the thing. He's basically running on fumes right now because the Nezzy Rangers are, like, tapping into his power, and so if we have one big climactic fight and the Nezzy Rangers kill the Mega Rangers, then in like in order to do that, they're going to have to burn up all of their energy. And when they do that, they will die and Javius will die because all of his energy will be drained. All of our enemies will be gone and we will be left like, like the people in charge. So let's just stick with the plan and everything will be cool. And everything would be cool, except that, as I said, uh, Nezzy Red hears this, and Dave, he's not thrilled. He is not. So he goes, he doesn't actually break into this, like, conversation. He goes back to the other Nezzy Rangers, kind of drops the, he's upset. They're like, what's going on? He kind of drops the science on them. And he's like, I refuse to accept this. I will go, (laughs) this is amazing. He's like, I will go kill Mega Red, and then I will live as an immortal warrior. Um, Which he absolutely is not going to do. That's literally the entire point. Like you, it. I love. <laughs> he hears Hinalar, and Hinalar, Hinalar says, "My plan is that the Nezzy Rangers will kill the Mega Rangers, and then they themselves will die." And Nezared says, "I know how we'll get out of this plan. I will kill the Mega Rangers." But then, crucially, I will not die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. It's. I like it because I think it kind of gives you a little. It's a ridiculous, but B, it gives you kind of some insight into like the mindset of an Ezra Ranger. Mm-hmm. Like, like they're definitely hammers. Uh, so we cut back to the uh, home base, the mega ship, who's the. Dave, at this point, I realize I have forgotten the name of the spaceship that turns into Galaxy Mecha. Oh, it might just be like. I mean, whatever it is, clearly it's not like it's super either the mega ship I or think, the galaxy ship, and it could. I, yeah, it's like it's like Galaxy One or something like that. I honestly don't totally remember. Anyway, we cut back there, and Tall Steve Dave has made a discovery. He has located the Voyager machines. Um, um everyone is very excited, first, Kenta yeah. especially. Yeah, and then I think is it uh, Yusuku or Kubota? One of them is like that's. It's so obviously a trap. It's not even worth, like, this is not even worth discussing. This is very obviously a trap, and we're not going to go do this. Right. Like, we need to be smart about this. Like, yes, we do want them back, but we can't just, like, run in. So, we cut down to Earth, and the Mega Rangers are running in. Uh, <laughs> um, Mega Winger is coming down, uh, as is Delta Mega, and the three Neza Rangers are like, cool. Here they are. They're coming into our trap. Let's fight them. However, yeah. they are doing a However. sneaky thing. Uh, they're, they're pulling a fast and furious. They're driving very quickly through a tunnel underground. Love it. Um, that's fast ampersand furious, by the way. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they are in the, they're in the Digitank, and they are driving through like this underground tunnel to get to the other side of where Yusuku and uh, Delta Mega are fighting Nezi Red and Nezi Black. Nezi Yellow, nowhere to be seen yet, I don't think. Or rather, she didn't grow with the other two. I don't believe. Yeah, it is. Right? Uh, no, that is that is correct. And they're sort of like, mm, what's going on? They pop out uh, so there's like a fight going on as you say the rangers kind of like sneak around slash under they hop out and then neza yellow we see neza yellow see them and then she kind of fades out they all get into their individual uh voyager machines because it's not mega voyager that's there it's like the separated out chunks of it yeah, and so they like they run a quick check. Everything's cool. They're like, great. They form Mega Voyager, and they're like, all right, jerks. Like it's on now. However, double turns out. This whole thing 
was also part of the trap. Like, the trap was... And now I don't really know why they had to make this part of the trap. Because Mega Voyager was already formed out of the various Voyager machines. Like, when they captured him, they must have disassembled Mega Voyager and then done this. So, like, I don't know why they had to lay this trap to achieve this plan. But the end result is basically that Neza Yellow has managed to, like, upload herself as a computer virus to Mega Voyager's OS, and she now is con- in control. Yes. It's a, it's a convoluted plan, but I do I think it's pretty unique. Like, I don't think we've ever seen a monster turn itself into a virus and take control of the giant robot, so that at least was cool. The only thing I can think, and this is just, like, me making stuff up to fill the gaps as we so often have to do. Like, I'm going to guess that Yusku had built into the design of Mega Voyager, like, a security feature. So that if it's ever, like, unoccupied by all five rangers for more than X amount of time, it untransforms and, like, goes into lockdown. So they needed to have them come back to activate and recombine the machine so that then they could get into it while it was turned on and take it over. Again, I'm just making that up, but I like it. It it makes I like the episode it, Matt. Head sense. Accepted. Yeah. So anyways, now they're like now they're all captured. Like now it's like the Neza Rangers have sort of won this whole plan. Every they they crushed it. Uh every, every part of it is executed perfectly. Yeah. Nezzy Red is like, okay, well, we got them, and now step, we are going to step like five. We are going to like hold them hostage, but not with like we're not holding them hostage to try to get something out of Doctor Kubota. We're going to hold them hostage to try to get something out of Doctor Hinalar. So Nezzy Red goes up to the Nezzy Dimension. He's like, hey, we're just about to kill these guys. However, we're not going to. Until you promise to find a way to fix the flaw in our design that will make us die when we do this. uh, Because we want to be immortal. We're immortal warriors. And you you clearly have the ability to do that because you were smart enough to make us. So you're smart enough to make us in a way that doesn't fall apart. So do it. Now, what he forgot <laughs> is that Dr. Hinalar is smart. Like, he's expecting him to be smart enough to invent a way to keep to make him immortal, but he's not expecting him to be smart enough to uh, trick him or have planned for this. Yeah. <laughs> so Hinalar's like, listen, man, um, super sorry. That's actually not going to work. Yes, you will die, but that's the greatest honor of a Nezere, is to die fighting our enemies. Um, dulce et decorum est much, Dr. Hinalar. Anyways. He says... Um, he's like, listen, that... Yeah, like, in this world, immortality does not exist. Uh, but you know it does exist. Mind control lasers. <laughs> <laughs> and he it just happens to have one right here. Yeah, man. I bet Wilfred Owen's, like, commanding officer wishes he had a mind control laser. I'm sure that's a great reference, Dave. I have no idea. Matt, it's so about. good. Somebody, uh, Matt, I pro- somebody is howling out there at that joke. <laughs> Anyways, I was um, going to say, like, you said that with the confidence of someone who knows that it's like a home run, and I'm just still like staring at the catcher behind you. Like, he must have caught the ball. I didn't see it go anywhere. <laughs> no way, man. This is this is like a rookie of the league situation. Um, rookie of the league, my favorite movie. Rookie of the Year. Oh. Wilfred Owen wrote the poem, Del Sea to Cora Mast. Uh-huh. Anyways. Um, so he's like, my control lasers. And then Red's like, ah, I'm going to kill Mega Red. It's great. So they jump back. Uh, there's a great fight. There's not a lot to say about it, I guess. It's a great location for a fight. It's it's like out in like a in the woods and there's like a big clearing by a waterfall. I feel like we've seen this location in, um, I think both Kaku Ranger and O Ranger, because O Ranger's base is like out in a mountain in the woods somewhere. Mm-hmm. 
Now, crucially, when Nezu Red gets back to Earth from the Nezu dimension, um, he, like, zaps the cockpit of Mega Voyager with a laser, and that teleports Mega Red out of the cockpit because he's so fired up and wanting to kill Mega Red. He's like, he doesn't even care anymore about killing the other ones or destroying Mega Voyager. He needs to personally murder Kenta. Like, that is everything he cares about doing. And so he pulls him out and he's fighting him and he is winning. Yeah. Um, it's great. It's like, again, it's just a, it's a really good fight. It's a sword of fight, sword on sword fight. There's a lot of like energy blasts and like explosions going on. Uh, really well choreographed. And just as it is about to uh, kind of strike the final blow, Dr. Kubota is in the fight. Yes. Uh, he, sort of. Yeah. So basically, uh, they have transformed the mega ship into Galaxy Mega. And now Galaxy Mega, like, Kubota isn't, like, at the helm. But he is, like, you know, commanding the ship. It's his ship, even if it's a giant robot right now. It's awesome. Um, and they're, like, coming in for the save. And that distracts Nezi Red enough that Kenta is able to get away from him and, like, hop up and fly into the cockpit of Galaxy Mega. So now, yes. Galaxy Mega's in the fight, but Mega Voyager is still evil, and the other two are... Wait, okay, so... we did. Oh, sorry, we didn't mention this before. Basically, the, uh, I think it was ne uh, Neza Black used some sort of, like, energy beam to transmute into, like, giant mecha handcuffs, effectively. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, those guys are all captured. Um, Nezi Red wants to kill Nezi, or Mega Red, but Nezi Black wants to stop Nezi Red from killing Mega Red because he is still concerned about, um, transport, like, when that happens, they're all gonna die, right? Yeah. And so there's yes. this sort of, like, multi layered struggle between these characters. Now, what Dr. Kubota tells Kenta to do is like, listen, if we put all of the ionic pulse energy, I think I wrote this down because it didn't make any sense really and I wanted to make sure I just had at least had the words right. Can I tell you what I put down, Matt, real quick? Is it if we send an ionic pulse to the Mega Saber and hit it full power, it could force the enemy out of Mega Voyager? No, my notes just say nonsense words, but it just might work. <laughs> That's basically it. Like, if we punch Mega Voyager hard enough with our laser sword, uh, that might make the computer virus that is Nezzy Yellow get uninstalled. Um, and then we'll be fine. Now, this is dangerous, of course, because the other four Mega Rangers are still in Mega Voyager. But they all decide, like, this is the best idea. We're just going to go for it. Yeah, Um. so that kind of all, like, that sort of all happens, basically. Um. There's a lot of fighting. Uh, they do manage to do it. Red, Neza Red hits the other two Neza Rangers with, like, the same berserk mind control beam that he gets hit with. But now... Everybody's in the fight. So it's four mecha on three giant Neza Rangers. They're like, what are we going to do? Kabota says, listen, man. Here I think is how we need to do this. They're clearly gearing up to unleash some like ultra mega attack on us. What we need to do is like get hit by it, absorb it, and then like... Like, when we're absolutely at, like, the breaking point, use our, like, shields that have absorbed their power to, like, blast them back. Um, oh, see, that's not what I thought was happening. I thought what was happening... something like that. I thought what was happening was that the three Nezi Rangers are, like, really pouring on the power, Right. And what they want to do is wait until, like, just before uh, they get to, like, peak power. And at that point, if you shoot them when they're all charged up like that, they'll just go off like a bomb. Oh, okay. But they need to be able to, like, weather the storm long enough 
to survive to the point where they can hit them in that vulnerable moment. So they do, I think it's Mega Pink is just like, yeah, well, but, you know, what if that doesn't work? And Kubota just says, then we'll all blow up together. Right, because don't forget, um, Kubota's in Galaxy Mega, as is the entire staff. Aw, oh, dude, it is stone cold. It's so impressive. Yeah, and they're like, and, and and they all just sort of turn to each other like, well, okay. And so Galaxy Mega and uh, Mega Voyager, right, combine... Wait, no. Galaxy Mega and Delta Mega combined to create uh, Super Galaxy Mega. And then all three remaining giant robots. Yes. Like, all sort of, like, link arms. And I guess, like, tie into each other's energy fields or something? I don't know. Yeah. What they say is formation. And the formation is just they put their hands on Ultra Mega Voyager's shoulders. Yeah. I was really hoping they were going to have, like, some final combined form. With like all four yeah, robots becoming one robot. Yeah, I was very disappointed. Robot. But what are you gonna do? That that did not end up uh, did not end up being the case. Anyway, so they go through th- with that plan and it works. Like th- <laughs> we've really built it up, but yeah, like <laughs> it's just like they say we're gonna win with our hearts, and they say is that the best you got? And they just get shot with a laser bunch, and then they shoot the monsters with a big gun, and then they blow up, and and then it's the now, end of that. Now. Um, having said that, there is an amazing graphic sequence where King Javius, who it turns out is just a giant eye, like, is draw like, sucked bodily, uh, ocularly, Mm -hmm. out of his, like, containment field or whatever, like, screaming across dimensions with, like, weird energy tendrils and tentacles, like, grabbing at everything around him as he passes until he is like drawn into the energy field that the Nezer Rangers are using to blast the Mega Rangers, like while screaming Javius, like as he dies and then they all blow up and he blows up. Um, It's an impressive sequence. It's also really weird because when, like when he is in his little containment field, it is a screen showing, like, a video recording of, like, an eye, like, an eyeball that just has, like, a weird filter over it, right? Mm -hmm. When it gets sucked out of the containment field, it becomes, like, a CGI thing. Yeah, it it is really cool, Like, it just shifts into a different version of special effects. And it... We are now sort of at the cusp of when... Super Sentai is starting to get into using, like, piecemeal CGI in places. And I wasn't expecting to see it here because it's like, we haven't really gotten much of that in this season. Other than, like, you know, Mm -hmm. some, like, shifting background stuff. We haven't seen character models that are CG, really, at all. And so to have that, like, pop up, like, in this one weird moment during the death of King Javius, like, it was cool. It was neat. He blows up into triangles. Because that's how CGI things blow up. They become triangles, you know? What? Uh, I think Uganda exploded into triangles. Or is he just made out of triangles? I mean, he's kind of made out of triangles, but he may well have exploded into triangles, too. I don't know if we've seen uh, him explode into triangles yet. Because he's never fully died. Mm, good point, good point, good point. Uh, anyways, basically, we cut back to Hinalar, and he's just like, he's incredibly stoked. He's like, this is awesome. This is exactly what the plan was. It worked perfectly. Right. Now, he, I think, now, is a little too excited, because the Mega Rangers did win. Like, King Javis is dead, and I think he's taking that as a, like, he's deciding to take that as a victory, but, like, the Mega Rangers are still around and beat his, like, secret weapon, you know? Well, I think his assumption is is that now with like Javius out of the way, you know, kind of the stage is set. But the thing is, is that like then there's like a big whoops and there's some crazy like dimension quake happening in the in the Nezere dimension. There's like a big hole in the wall of the base. Uh, Hitler runs. We have no idea what's happening. Hitler just runs through it. And that's kind of the last we see of the Nezere for this episode. Uh, we go back down to Earth. And the Mega Rangers are hanging out in the Digital Research Club at the high school. 
They're decorating for a Christmas party. They're just like, they're so thrilled that everything went well. They're finally on the other side of this thing. And at this point, it, like, this would not be a great ending to the season, right? But it could be the ending of the season. Like, if I was Kenta, I would think that we just won. Yeah, I was going to say, it it does kind of very much feel like the end of the season. Yeah, like, I mean, Javius and Shibalina and Uganda are still alive. But, like, I don't know that. They know that they're, like, the toughest people they've ever fought have been killed. And if they ever knew that Javius existed, they saw him blow up. And he's, like, the big bad's boss. So, like, yeah, have a Christmas party. Celebrate. You're done. Congratulations. It's the end of the calendar year. You know? So it's the end of the season, clearly. Uh, Yusuke shows yeah, up with presents. A... It's, all, it's all snacks. Um, Kento is overjoyed because he was hoping there would be more snacks. Um, he's, Yusuke's like, these are from Dr. Kubota. And Dr. Kubota appears on the screen. And Kento, like, tears up. And Dr. Kubota is tearing up. And he, like, hugs the screen. Um, it's great. Right at the end, everybody, like, has... Like, uh, is just like being wacky for a second, and Shun just picks up the cake that Yusuku is brought and just jams his face entirely, like takes a <laughs> giant bite out of the cake itself, uh, which is a weird little moment. And that's it for the episode. Like, again, I genuinely don't know what is going to happen next. But what's weird is that next week's episode is just about Kenta losing his digitizer. Like, it, it's just, like, a filler episode after that happened. I haven't seen the episode yet, so I don't know what happens. There might be other stuff going on in the background. But it's like they get to the end of this big climactic thing, but there's still, like, nine more episodes of this season. Yeah, it's a- and there's just this random, like, weird episode that could have come at any point in the season. Um, But that is the end of the episode. It is not yet, however, Dave, the end of our episode. Or rather, it could be. Because normally at this point in the episode, and we haven't actually done it in a while because we've been going through this Nezu Ranger plot, uh, yes. we rank the monsters on the Creature Royale. See how they stack up against each other. Now, all of the Nezu Rangers are dead. Yes. However, I don't know if we should put them on this list or if we should be saving them for the uh, like the larger list of like season villains. What do you think? Well, uh, I think here's what I would say is that the... Oh, man. What are their names again? From Kaku Ranger, the Kunoichi something or other, like the Lady Flower Ninjas. Mm -hmm. They are... They're actually not on any list, I don't think. And that really is kind of the zone where where the Nez Rangers exist. Um, I I think I would say that they are... They're not lieutenants, right? They're not lieutenants and they're not bosses. They're monsters with character in the same way that, like, the, um, you know, maybe the the, the Three Stooges are. Mm-hmm. Different but vibe, I think they're of course, still, but... Yeah, but I, but I think they're still monsters. Yeah, and just so, because they're recurring monsters, like, you know... Jin, the demon fist, he's just on our monster list. He's not like yeah, separate. So here's so I I would say they do go on the monster we- list. Um, here's what I would say. I think we should rank them against themselves and then find one spot for them as a group on the larger list. I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay. So we've got blue, pink, black, yellow, and red. Um, of the Nezu Red is obviously is is the best, right? That's a good question, Dave. Um, I mean, I think it's okay. It's gotta be Nezu Red or or Nezu. I think it's. I don't. Well, okay. Now, having said that, having come out with that very strong opinion, let me did back you know that, that up. Nezu Yellow bit. is really good, though. Nezu Yellow is really good. Okay, so the Nezu Pink is the worst one. We can say that much. Yes. Yeah, and again, these are all relative to each other. I think that these are yeah. all great monsters, but um 
Okay, so Nezzy Pink is the lamest one, and then... I mean, are okay, we just so going like, to go in order of death? Because Blue was the one who died next, and Blue was just, like, crazy for murder, right? Yeah, I'm but in the remember... context of being a monster, that kind of works for you. I no, think I'm, the I'm, one actually really, that kind I'm, of... I'm blanking a little bit, Dave, on what... What was the like actual plot of the Nezzy Blue episode? I it basically is just that he's he is totally driven to kill Nezzy Blue or Mega Blue, and the whole episode is about sort of trying to like trick and distract him from from like using that oh, narrow minded right, obsession right, against right. him. I think um Nezzy Black, I think, would be in the next one, just because he doesn't have a whole lot. He didn't get a feature episode. He didn't have a whole lot going on. Um, the the thing I will say for, for Nezzy for Black, him. and I um, I do think this is cool, is that Nezzy Black is very much Koichiru's counterpart, not just in mm-hmm. his color, but like in his approach and in his like role on the team like he is the planner he's the thinker he's the field leader he's the guy who like you know helps them try to keep their head on their shoulders but yeah you, you know he he never gets a great showcase yeah so i mean that's i i agree with everything that you're saying i just feel like as a that he kind of lacks that degree of character development so i would say black next and then i would say i think blue yeah, I think that's and right. Then, and then, man. Honestly, I think that, I, I think, I think it, it goes red and then yellow. I think that yellow is actually the best was, one. All right. I was about to go back and forth on it. So if you have a strong opinion, I'm, I'm good. Because I, th- what, uh, what I okay. think was interesting about yellow is that she got her own focus episode, but she was also kind of the focus of the pink, like the Nezzy pink storyline. And, like, mm-hmm. watching the two of them play off each other, I thought was very... Like, you just got to really see a lot more of her character in that. Like, very, like, petty, cruel, like... Uh, yeah, like, uh, Nezzy Red is great, and he's got a lot of passion and fire, um, but he's a little more straightforward of a villain. Like, Nezzy Yellow was a was a planner, and she was, like, devious in a way that the others kind of weren't. Yeah. I mean, I already, I already did say that, that Nezzy Black was a planner, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Okay. Nezzy so Black is organized, that, but Nezzy Yellow is like clever. Where, where do the Nezzy Rangers go on this list? I, my inclination, honestly, is they, is that they go at the top. They're, They've got a great character arc. They've got a lot of like at the end, especially for the last, the remaining three who live, they've got a lot of pathos for villains, Mm -hmm. right? Like they can't break away from their single minded dedication of destroying the Neza, the Rangers, but like they have this drive to like not die. Um, I think they're, they're great monsters. I agree. The only th- person who I think would be uh, give them a run for their money is number one, what is currently number one on our list of Nezere, which is Neo Bat Nezere. Just because, like, Neo Bat Nezere really got to do a couple of interesting things, and he, like, he really sort of set the tone in a fairly early episode uh, for what ended up he to did. be a really good season. But I think that you're right. I think that if we're just ranking the characters against each other in this season. Like those I think are ultimately like the best and most memorable ones that we're going to have. Yeah. Yeah. So there they go. They're the new spot. Number one. Nice. Congratulations. You all died anyway. Um, Dave, that now is going to do it for another episode of The Spy Who Loved Mega Ranger. Before we finish up here, I'd like to remind you that you can email the show at supersentibrothers at gmail.com. If you want to get any updates on future episodes or check out the things that we're talking about on Twitter, we are at Super Sentai Bros. If you like the show, please remember that shining in the iTunes review section, there are five stars. Uh, but the Apple app, the Apple Podcast app, it's bad now. It was always kind of bad, but now oh, it's bummer. especially bad. Uh, so if you can still manage to use that app in some way, do the thing on that app that would be uh, nice and telling people that uh, you like the show. 
I don't know how it works anymore. It's genuinely a nightmare. Um, but you know it's not a nightmare, Dave? The Retrograde Orbit Radio podcast network, of which we are a part. If you would like to listen to any of the other great Retrograde Orbit Radio shows, you can find them all at RetrogradeOrbitRadio.com. Once again, we are the Super Sentai Brothers. I'm Matt. I'm Dave. And we'll see you next week for the greatest show on Earth. <laughs>